While many people know all about Tesla's quest to create fully autonomous cars, there's another company, Mobileye, that's been around longer than Tesla, has more cars on the road with self-driving technology, and in fact was Tesla's go-to solution to autonomous driving until 2016, when Tesla and Mobileye parted ways. While many people think Tesla will win the full self-driving battle, there are plenty in the know who think that prize will actually go to Mobileye. Let's take a look at these competing technologies. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So this video has been requested for quite some time and I'm glad to finally get to it. I had originally thought of including Comma AI in this tech shootout, but for this video, I'm just going to focus on Mobileye and Tesla. Comma AI is an amazing technology and software, but it is fully aftermarket and relies on a given car's technology to work rather than being more of a turnkey solution. So we will save that for another video. Of course, no offense at all to Comma AI and George Hotz, who is a genius with a great vision for open source autonomous driving. And by the by, a quick note here, I'm likely going to say full self-driving a lot. This is not technically accurate. It is more precisely advanced driver assistance right now, as no cars can fully drive themselves around. But anyway, it's easy to slip up and say full self-driving instead, so just understand it's not fully autonomous yet. Let's start with a very brief history of Tesla and Mobileye. Tesla was founded in San Carlos, California in 2003. Elon Musk was not a founder, but influenced the company strongly, both financially and personally, shortly after it was created. 2003, by the way, was the year that GM recalled all of its EV1 cars and effectively killed the electric car, well, at least generation one of it. Anyway, Elon Musk joined the company in early 2004, becoming chairman of the board initially. Tesla first announced Autopilot, which was primarily traffic-aware cruise control and auto lane keeping at the time, in September of 2014. This technology used vision, radar, and sonar, with no LiDAR, along with Mobileye's IQ3 chip to do autonomous driving. In 2016, Tesla and Mobileye parted ways under apparently acrimonious circumstances after a fatal accident. And at that time, Tesla's full self-driving by all accounts took a huge step backwards in its capabilities. In 2018, Tesla released their in-house built hardware-software combination, the Inference Engine, or Hardware 3, with Tesla designed chips that are manufactured by Samsung and in-house software. From Tesla's website, the sensor suite on the car includes, quote, eight surround cameras providing 360 degrees of visibility around the car at up to 250 meters of range. 12 updated ultrasonic sensors complement this vision, allowing for detection of both hard and soft objects at nearly twice the distance of the prior system. A forward-facing radar with enhanced processing provides additional data about the world on a redundant wavelength that is able to see through heavy rain, fog, dust, and even the car ahead. To make use of a camera suite this powerful, the new hardware introduces an entirely new and powerful set of vision processing tools developed by Tesla. Built on a deep neural network, Tesla Vision deconstructs the car's environment at greater levels of reliability than those achievable with classical vision processing techniques." End quote. Of note, there is also in newer model cars an inward-facing camera inside the car that might be used in future for driver or passenger monitoring, but is currently apparently inactive. A newer hardware four suite is supposedly coming at the end of 2021, but there are rumors that this has been delayed for unknown reasons. At any rate, Elon has said many times that Hardware 3 is adequate for fully autonomous driving, and we will have to wait and see if that is indeed the case. And now for Mobileye. Mobileye was started in 1999 by Amnon Shashua, a researcher at Hebrew University who turned his academic research on autonomous driving into this company. The company, based out of Jerusalem, Israel, started by making hardware, the IQ chip, which has gone through a number of iterations since then, as well as the proprietary image processing algorithms to run on the chip. The company added their technology to autos from BMW, GM, and Volvo, and in 2014, like I said, they partnered with Tesla, releasing their first self-driving technology in Model S's in 2015. As mentioned previously, a fatal accident in 2016 led to a breakup with Tesla in July of 2016. In 2017, Mobileye partnered with BMW and Intel, and also in 2017, Mobileye was acquired by Intel for $15.3 billion. While Mobileye has partnered with auto manufacturers, they are obviously independent of them. Currently, Mobileye is demonstrating autonomous driving capabilities that are in the same category as what Tesla is doing auto lane keeping, auto lane changing, and some ability to navigate on streets as well as highways. 
While Mobileye has traditionally primarily been vision-based and of course radar and sonar, they are also open to LiDAR and are using that technology more and more over time. The upcoming Lucid Air, for example, will have a built-in LiDAR system that can only see out the front of the car, not like the ugly balls on top of Waymo cars that can do 360 degree LiDAR. In fact, the Lucid Air is going to have 13 outward facing cameras, front facing LiDAR, front facing long range radar, 12 ultrasound sensors, and an internal camera for driver monitoring. So it's gonna be quite the suite on that car. And all of this is supported by Mobileye's IQ4 SOC. It's possible this might even now be the IQ5 chipset as that is coming out shortly and will supposedly support L5 autonomy. So how do Tesla and Mobileye compare in terms of technology, let's look at Tesla's Inference engine or Hardware 3 rolled out in 2018 alongside Mobileye's IQ4 also rolled out in 2018. And we can also look at what we know of Tesla's Hardware 4 versus Mobileye's IQ5, which will supposedly be powering cars in 2021 or 2022. So Tesla Hardware 3, we have dual independent SOCs or systems on chips that can do 144 tera operations per second on int 8 numbers. Of course, you have to divide this number by two as each of the chips is only doing 72 tops apiece. The inference engine uses 14 nanometer technology with 6 billion transistors per chip. It has two NPU or neural processing units and the entire chipset with redundant chips runs at sub 100 watts. And by the way, you can see my video on this for more details about the inference engine. What about Mobileye's IQ4? It's a little bit more difficult to find out for sure, but the IQ4 hardware seems to include only one SOC, not two as with hardware three, although there does appear to be internal redundancy inside the chip. This chip uses a 28 nanometer technology. It's capable of 2.5 tera operations per second, and it runs at a mere three watts, which is pretty amazing. In terms of specs, Tesla's hardware three crushes IQ4. It's got a smaller die size, it's 28 times faster per chip, and it has dual redundancy, but it does consume much more power. Of course, this is for the entire PCB with two chips, plus all the associated display drivers, etc. But still, it consumes a good deal of power compared to the IQ4, which actually matters a lot in a battery operated car. What about hardware 4 versus IQ5? Well, this is of course more speculative as neither of these is out on the market yet, but let's take a quick look. For Tesla, the chip itself should come out in late 2021 with the earliest rollout to cars in 2022. So IQ5 will actually beat it to market. Hardware 4 will be a drop-in replacement for Hardware 3, so it will be a similar form factor with dual redundant SOCs on the PCB. The die size will reduce to seven nanometer technology, which is a two times reduction in die size, or there's also possible rumors it might shrink as much as to five nanometers. During the summer, all of the indications were that TSMC was going to make this chip, but apparently now it's back to being created by Samsung. And by the way, this chip is being co-developed this time with Broadcom. According to Tesla, the chip is quote, three times better than hardware three. So that puts the speed at around 210 tera operations per second per chip or 420 total for both. The chip is expected to operate in around the same power envelope as the current version, so around 100 watts for the entire PCB. As for IQ5, apparently they have some chips already out at the end of 2020, with cars being developed with the technology right now. Again, it's not clear if this is dual redundant or not, but it's definitely down to seven nanometer technology, which is four times smaller than their 28 nanometer die size. The new version will do 24 tops versus the current version's 2.5, so around 10 times improvement. And also the new chip will bump it up to 10 watts power consumption rather than the current three watts. In terms of the release date, like I said, the IQ5 will definitely beat Tesla hardware 4 to market. On specs, the inference engine still wins big time. It will be nearly 10 times faster, but still that's a pretty big catch up on Mobileye's part to come that far. But again, the IQ5 is going to consume much less power, which is an advantage. Just for reference, the IQ5 compares reasonably well with the current hardware 3 hardware out from Tesla, but it is actually still slower. So that's the hardware front. In a moment, let's discuss software and training. But first, if you enjoyed this video, please do like it so other people can find it and definitely subscribe for more of this. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. I really appreciate your support. And we actually have a new patron since the last video, Mark Zeman. It's great to meet you. Also, be sure to check out our merch store, which now has the quote, all input is error t-shirts and hoodies. As always, a shout out to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. You can check him out on YouTube and Instagram. And if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely click our referral link. If you do and you purchase a car, we each get a thousand free supercharger miles. And of course, don't forget that we are Amazon affiliates now. If you look in the description and click the link and you go shopping, you actually help out the channel, which is super cool. Thank you. All right, so what about software? 
Well, according to Elon Musk, autonomous driving is, quote, really a software limitation. The hardware exists to create full autonomy, so it's really about developing advanced, narrow AI for the car to operate on. While Mobileye might need to get to their IQ5 to have enough processing speed to really do full self-driving, Tesla is convinced that Hardware 3 is already fast enough to drive autonomously and is just waiting on the software to catch up. Both companies at heart use deep neural network training and tons of data to improve their system's capabilities. Again, you can see my videos on all of this above. As both systems use much the same sensor suite and have relatively similar hardware, it really comes down to the genius of their programmers and how much data they have to throw at the problem. And by the way, you can see my neural net videos for more on why data is such a big deal. When I think about it, Tesla versus Mobileye is a little bit like Apple versus Google Android. Tesla is completely vertically integrated and controls all the hardware as well as the software, while Mobileye is more like Google that has a specification they put out and controls the software but not all of the hardware. So to Tesla's advantage, they only have to worry about themselves and their cars, and this helps a ton. It's so much easier to know exactly what cars you're planning for and their exact sensor configuration ahead of time. Mobileye, on the other hand, has to account for smaller sensor suites, all the way up to what Lucid is doing with 12 cameras, LiDAR, etc. This, of course, is more complex and can lead to more error checking and such, but Mobileye has access to far more cars using their system than does Tesla, and this can scale much faster. Just make a deal with a new company and they will roll out your system on their cars for you. Currently, Tesla has somewhere around 1.5 million cars on the road with Hardware 3 in them. Mobileye, on the other hand, has their technology in 313 car models as of 2020, and according to the company, 40 million individual cars have Mobileye in them. About a year ago during during a conference. As of about a year ago, Tesla claimed to have around 3 billion miles of driving data, and I assume that number is much higher now since it's been a full year since then. Mobileye meantime claims to be collecting 8 million kilometers a day, or around 5 million miles per day. It's unclear how much data they have now, but at that rate it would take them a bit less than three years to get to 3 billion miles from zero, and of course they already have a great deal of data. Cars with Mobileye technology in them include those from GM, Kia, Ford, BMW, VW, Hyundai, Nissan, Audi, and Volvo. So both companies clearly have massive data, and both are growing this data much faster than the competition can. The biggest difference is that Mobileye, which started only with vision systems, is now fully embracing LiDAR and is creating high-resolution maps of everywhere their cars drive. Tesla, quite famously, is not using LiDAR at all, as Musk calls it a crutch. At CES 2021, Amnon Shashua, CEO of Mobileye, said that Tesla's approach to full self-driving is fundamentally flawed and will hit a, quote, glass ceiling. In other words, they won't be able to keep improving given their training methodology. Tesla, according to him, uses a brute force method of mashing data through their training networks willy-nilly, incrementally improving full self-driving technology until it's good enough. In other words, they release a beta, they let people put tons of miles on that, they train on all that data, they re-release the thing, and incrementally improve over time. The problem here is data overload. You're training on everything, not the right thing and everything, most of which is pretty much solved by now, is not only useless, it actually bogs the system down that's trying to learn, as 90 plus percent of the training data is not really very useful and it's already been learned. Mobileye, on the other hand, is building high-definition maps, similar to what Waymo, GM Cruise, etc. are doing, but crucially, they are not dumping all of each car's data back to their training center. Instead, they're focused on training for the semantics of the road, which I have covered in other videos, by the way, see above. That would be the nuances of the streets, the behavior of other objects and cars, etc. This is translated into a detailed map of the area, but with only the important parts notated, rather than the more brittle 3D creations that companies like Waymo are creating. So Mobileye is straddling the fence a little bit here. They're not creating fully detailed, brittle 3D environments that are rails a car like Waymo taxis drive on, and that have to be updated constantly to work. But they're also not building maps completely on the fly as they go, like Tesla's doing. They're using LiDAR and other methods to create detailed maps that can be efficiently transmitted to their fleet. Is LiDAR needed? Elon Musk adamantly says no. I agree that ultimately it's not completely necessary, but LiDAR is getting very cheap now. Front-facing LiDAR is down to only about $500, which is nothing compared to the cost of a car, and of course it will get cheaper over time. And LiDAR provides redundancy that specifically solves the large still object on road ahead problem that plagues vision-only systems and can even lead to fatalities. My personal thought is that Tesla should put these systems in and use them as an extra safety backup. 
At any rate, I don't think LiDAR will ultimately be the deciding factor between these two. It really comes down to the all or nothing versus slow expansion methodologies that Tesla and Mobileye are using, and which is the better system ultimately. As with Waymo, it appears Mobileye is limited in the scope of their real-world testing. It's done extensive testings in Israel, Detroit, and Germany in 2020, and it's planning to expand to Tokyo, Paris, New York, and Shanghai in 2021. This, of course, is a more tightly controlled, step-by-step -step approach, and has led to really impressive driving in the cities the company is mapped out and trained in. Arguably, it's doing better than Tesla can do right now in those cities. But Tesla can pretty much do almost as well anywhere in the United States with the full self-driving beta that's out now, and will hopefully soon be available in other countries too. Tesla's full self-driving is not citywide, it's countrywide, on back roads, roads the fleet has never seen before, etc, etc. Plus, from working on videos about Andre Karpathy and his AI team at Tesla has shown, they are not as brute force as Shashua claims. In fact, the beta testers even have a button there to press when something incorrect happens, alerting the Tesla mothership to that particular data point. And even with the wider release that I'm driving, it's when humans take over control or full self-driving fails that it's flagged for further training. So Tesla may in fact have the right methodology here, though it will kind of happen all at once. While Mobileye and Waymo and the like will do full self-driving city by city, if Tesla gets this right, the whole fleet, at least on a per country basis, will turn on all at once and nearly every road will be autonomously drivable. Of course, if Tesla doesn't get it right, Mobileye will slowly eat up full self-driving city by city. But if Tesla does have the right system in place, they will win more or less all at once, and it's going to be much more obvious. I, for one, am happy to see companies taking different routes to solving this problem. There's more chance at least one of them will solve full self-driving, and when that happens, we all win. Here's to it happening in the next year or two. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative. If you did, definitely like and subscribe so other people can find it. And in the meantime, please do ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.